Hello folks, this is a Jeep Wrangler. 80,000 miles. Customer says it needs brakes. Let's see if I can back it up for you. Let's see if we can hear the sound. Think it needs brakes? Let's go forward. Do it again. Oh yeah. Let's see what that looks like. All right. Right rear brakes. There's a problem right there. There's no brake pads left. Hmm? That's all metal. That's the metal piece. There should be material in between and then the rotor. Look on this side, you can see a little bit of the material. You can see the gap. So, yeah. Brake time. And the left rear is no better. Same thing. It's all metal. No material whatsoever. And these wheels are not gonna come off for beans. Look at all the rust. Not the rust, there's the corrosion from the aluminum rim to the metal axle. Okay? I have to get a good sledge to get these suckers off. Look at that, look at the corrosion there. So imagine this customer had a flat tire on the road. This tire would not come off. Not unless you carry a sledge in your car. All right, that's it. Time for brakes. Ciao. All right, you guys ready to see what's behind us? There you go. There's the outside brakes. Still has little pads left. But barely. See it? It's on an angle. See how thick it is over here? And how thin it is over there? Okay. This is the one in the back. Oops, the one in the back. There's the one in the back. Definitely nothing left. And the rotor. Remember, all this rust eats up that material really fast. So, don't do those uh, brake changes that just change pads only. Okay? All this rough surface over here will eat up that pad in a few months. All right? Chopped up all of that... Uh, Corrosion over there, so this rotor should pop off kind of easy. Still have to hit it with a sledge. There you go, folks. Want to wonder why your uh, brake pad to wear out unevenly like this? Okay. See how you have thickness over here? It goes on an angle. You have hardly nothing here. Okay. That brake pad wears out unevenly. I'm going to explain to you why. This is the hardware that makes your um, caliber slide back and forth. Watch this one. This one. Easy peasy. This one. Frozen. Cannot move it, compress it, stretch it, or anything. So this is stuck in that position. This one moves in and out. See? That's why... Change the hardware, lubricate these things. These things could jam up too. There's little clips. All right, we're gonna take this apart and see what's wrong with it. Hopefully you don't need a new bracket. All right. There's your hardware problem. All right, folks, after I pulled this rotor out, okay, what did I see? Park and brake shoes are shot. Look at that. Nothing but full of dirt. This one has no linings whatsoever on it. Rusted to death. So I went to the store. AutoZone sells this one. It's about $42. Then there's a hardware kit over there. Another $15. Listen, there's no simple way to get these things off. It's got dual springs. In the front of the shoe and in the back of the shoe, right? 
they're together they're like that then you have the adjuster and then there's a spring this thing is rusted to death so broke the spring off separated the shoes took the little spring clamps off that hold it onto the backing plate mangled the crap out of those two springs just to get it out and here it is it's dual springs there is no left and right there's no primary shoe secondary shoe uh, there's no up and down it's the same thing so I'm just gonna reverse it the same way I'm gonna try to put those springs on I, I'm gonna put the top shoe on and then I'm gonna try to get these springs to go definitely gonna hang the two springs on the shoe first and then we're gonna figure out how that's gonna happen yeah it's not fun let's try it let's do it all right if you think putting parking brake shoes are easy no way there's no there's no simple way to do it but what I did was I took the two new springs I put it on the upper shoe okay then I laid the upper shoe right on top of the reluctor Okay, I'm just going to show it to you. All right. It's sitting on the ABS sensor, so it's all the way down as far as I can. I hung the spring down on the bottom. And then I took the bottom shoe and I shoved it in between the backing plate and the reluctor. I got one spring to hook up. I just got to grab the other one. So I'm going to use this cotter pin puller. I'm going to grab that, I'm going to pull it in and see if I can hook it up. That seems to be the only way to do it. There's no other way that you're going to pull double springs through here and be able to hook it. So, like I said, I was able to drop one shoe as far as I can with the two springs. Then I was able to shove the shoe towards the back, grab the back one, and now I'm going to grab the front one. That's the only way to do it. It's crazy. I was able to grab that. There wasn't too much tension on it at all. Like I said, I grabbed it down. As I'm holding it with my thumb, I went and I pushed it back in. All right, so now both springs are on. Now I'm going to try to get it on that adjuster. I have to spread it wide open. Here we go. All right, I'll tell you, there's no easy trick to doing it. Okay. Once you put the two shoes on and you stretch the spring like I showed you before, I went and I squeezed in the adjustable adjusting link over here, okay? Without the spring, of course. I think it was I lifted it up, I shoved one side in, then with my hand I pushed this shoe up while I'm pushing this one down with the other one, and I was able to get it in, okay? This spring is the easiest one to put on, hooked it up there, my cotter pin uh, tool just pulled it, clicked right in. These clips, because they're brand new, they are a B-I-T-C-H, okay? So yeah, you're gonna have to anchor it somehow and be able to push it in and then twist it. But this side is done. Can't wait for the other side. I really don't wanna do the other side, but we're gonna do it. All right, so these shoes are in, a brake cleaner, I sprayed everything in there. We're just going to clean this up a little bit and it's going to be rotor time and then put back the rest of the uh, brakes. All right. I showed you that in my other uh, Wrangler rear brake job. So I'm not going to duplicate it here, technically, but I'll say it real quickly after I put a majority of this back together. All right. But this is the park and brake shoe part of it. All right. Let's continue. All right, folks. There you go all together okay loosen up that uh the frozen pin lube it up give a little sand it's good grease it all up there's all the old parts all right there is the brake shoe the brake pads and the crappy rotor all right off the other side that's it thanks for watching if you want to know how to do the brakes i have a separate video for the wrangler brakes all right it's last year's video so this one was basically just to get to the parking brake. All right. Thanks for watching. Ciao.
Hey, you want to see what that right rear looks like? Look at the shoes on this one. The material fell off the shoes. Brake pads are down. Some metal. And look at this. You ever see this? You ever see a road appeal? Look at that. The glazed part, and there's the rusted part. Never saw that before. Crack shoes, of course. All right. There you go. Change the rotors and brakes, people. Change them as a pair. Ciao. Hey, you want to see what that right rear looks like? Look at the shoes on this one. The material fell off the shoes. Brake pads are down. Some metal. And look at this. You ever see this? You ever see a rotor peel? Look at that. The glazed part, and there's the rusted part. Never saw that before. Crack shoes, of course. All right. There you go. Change rotors and brakes, people. Change them as a pair. Ciao.